some scholars argue that Jesus couldn't have been there, being a, 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 an observant Jew in a very pagan city, he wouldn't even approach. He would have contaminated himself. That's what he says in Matthew. He was in the area of Caesarea Philippi, not exactly in there. Although we go there today to remember this passage, there are no churches there. Well, there used to be one church there in the Christian era. We call that Christian era the Byzantine uh, uh, era, which lasted until the seventh century, what today is Israel, and they were remembering something else, nothing in relation to this passage. Remember the passage of the woman who was bleeding for so many years, and she thought to herself, if I can only touch the edge of this garment. Remember the passage? Mm -hmm. But this is what the early Christians were remembering over there. Why do we call, if I told you that the God who was worshipped there was called Pan, but today it's called Banias, because when the Arabs, Arabs come to the Holy Land in the 7th century, precisely in 638 Jerusalem will be conquered by them, and in Arab language they can't pronounce P, they say B, Pan, Ban. So it got stuck like that. So they cannot say Superman. They say Superman. Yeah, so here it goes. So yeah, so, <clears throat> so that's why we go, that's why we go to this place. To remember one of the one of the biggest revelations that we have in, in, in the New Testament. Peter acknowledging in front of every of his other friends. That this is the one. This is the one that Moses spoke about. But Jesus knew there was no his time yet. That's why he told them he warned his disciple not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. He wasn't looking for self publicity, okay? He knew his time and it wasn't yet. Go to the next. So, this is one of the niches. Uh, they were there, we assume that there were some type of idols that placed on them. I mean, they carved within the actual rock. Next. Now, there were more temples over here, but there have been a series of earthquakes, and that's why it, you know, the, 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 the floor has caved in, so you can see more niches. Next. And here we are. Okay. Yesterday, we were looking, <coughs> we were looking into uh, we were looking from Mount Precipice near uh, in, uh, NASA, and I show you to Mount Table, right? So let's go now to Matthew 17. Matthew 17 and verses 1 to 12. Apply this one too. Oh, it's interesting, sorry, that I didn't mention that when the disciple asked, well, so who do you think he is? Oh, some said John the Baptist. Well, John the Baptist already lost the head. Some said Jeremiah and Elijah. Now, this is related to now what is, with the conversation that he was having with his disciple. After six days, six days from what? You need to go back. After this confession that we have been before. After six days, Jesus took him Sorry, took with him Peter, <coughs> James. By the way, James uh, is no Hebrew. Bless you. James in Hebrew language doesn't exist. You should say there Jacob. Yep. That's a real that's the real name. Yep. <laughs> and Peter say and Pete says okay, it's because okay. <laughs> <laughs> and John the brother of James. I mean, there are two James here, two, two Jacobs. And left them up on a high mountain by themselves. Yet yeah, Jesus has 12 guys, he trained them, but within those 12, he has, I don't like to say favorite, because it sounds like really good, but his closest friend on a human level. There were three. There he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, 
and his clothes became as white as the light. Just then, they appeared before them, Moses and Elijah, talking with Jesus. This is not necrophilia. What, wait, were you talk, Jesus talking to the dead? Or we'll find out. And Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, I put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. While he was still speaking, a bright cloud enveloped them, and a voice from the cloud said, This is my son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. When the disciples heard this, they fell face down to the ground, terrified. But Jesus came and touched them. Get up, he said. Don't be afraid. When they look up, they saw no one except Jesus. As they were coming down the mountain, Jesus instruct them, instructed them to tell anyone what you have seen until the Son of Man has been raised from the dead. The disciple asked him, Why then the teachers of the law said that Elijah must come first? Jesus replied, To be sure, Elijah come and will restore all things. But I tell you, Elijah has already come, and they did not recognize him, but have done to him everything they wish. In the same way, the Son of Man is going to suffer on their hands. And then the disciple understood that he was talking to them about John the Baptist. After six days, took them up into the mountain. Which mountain? I'm asking you. Which mountain? Was that? Mount Tabor. Mount Tabor. Well, the text doesn't tell us. Matthew, again, who obviously knew what it was after Jesus is resurrected because Matthew had no idea what just happened. That's what he said. He instructed them not to tell anyone until the Son had been glorified. So that's when I imagine they're sitting and talking and remembering. Matthew probably heard what it was, but he didn't write it down. By the fourth century, there's a, they, they, this, when early Christians are looking for these holy places, and of course they ask, well, so what about the transfiguration? Where did it take place? Some of them were saying, Mount Tabor. Some of them were arguing, no, it's Mount Hermon because it's higher, and this is what the confession took around in, in that vicinity. Others even suggested the Mount of Olives because nobody knew exactly where it was. Until, to finish the argument, the church father said, it is Mount Tabor, it ain't no story. <laughs> the church father concluded, there was one of them called Jerome, said, no, it's in, it's in, in the Mount Tabor, and that's it. That's why the first church was built right there. No, we didn't go there. Uh, I go there more often with Catholic groups. Sometimes we celebrate Mass. Um, because the first is we actually is the top of the mountain. This is the Jezero Valley, the one we suggested for Mount Christmas. Right there. Of course, I was able to, to, to take that picture from uh, from, from the air very quickly because the wind was straight. This is a, the sun is behind me, guys. I cannot do this in the morning. This, the bright sun will not allow me to take this picture. It will be right in front of me. So I'm, that's on purpose. I went at five o'clock, five, between five and six, and the wind is so strong, I was afraid my drone would flow away because it was really, really windy. But I managed to take the picture. So the first church was built there during the Christian era, during the uh, <coughs> Byzantine period, but it destroyed in the seventh century. I mentioned to you that all churches and monasteries, or most of them, like 99 of them, were destroyed during the, during the, the Persian invasion. 
rebuilt by the crusaders exactly in the same place, destroyed in the 13th century by, by the Mamluks, these are the Muslims. Um, and today <clears throat> we will see ruins of the uh, crusader period and the Franciscan, because it's a Franciscan church right here, and there is one Greek Orthodox right here. I've never been in in the in the in the Greek Orthodox because they don't like <laughs> they don't like you just to be to come there as, as tourists. They're very they're very select. If you come in here, if you come in here, it's too great. Not to take pictures and selfie or any of that stuff. Okay, and besides, I don't do uh, I don't do uh, Orthodox foods. I would love to. Really, I would love, but most of them that, that come to the Holy Land are either or they are Greek or they're Russians or Bulgarians or Romanians. I don't speak any of those languages. <clears throat> That's what I, I don't work with. And they have guys on both languages. So the Franciscan bought, proper, bought the property uh, by the local Christians <clears throat> who owned the land, built again by the same guy who designed the the chapel of the month of, of uh, Beatitude, remember yesterday? That I showed you the chapel of the month of Beatitude. And Antonio Barruzzi had this thing of combining architecture with the, the biblical text. If you notice on the